So with glycopeptides, what has been used to characterize before, such as collisional induced, induced dissociation or collisional activated dissociation, really doesn't preserve these glycans on the peptide or on the protein. So when you target them, these sugars fall off or these glycans fall off, and you really don't know where in the peptide or proteins that these glycans are present. Now, one of the advantages of ETD or electron transfer dissociation is that it preserves these labile glycans on the peptide or on the protein, specifically fragments along the backbone of the peptide or the protein, allowing you not only to sequence with the peptide or the protein, but figure out where glycosylation is occurring. And also glycosylation can make the peptides much larger in mass. So this, is, uh, this can result in higher charge states for these peptides or protein, which also um, makes this uh, collisional activated dissociation or CID disadvantage for targeting these. So ETD actually really works well for these highly charged peptides or proteins, and that's another advantage of using ETD to go after glycopeptides.